The next group of plants that we're going to look at is the pteridophytes, and those are commonly known as ferns. Um, they actually have, um, as I mentioned before, their dominant generation is the sporophyte generation. It is um, different than the bryophytes. The bryophytes are the only ones that have a, a dominant gametophyte generation. Um, so now we're getting into all of the plants that have a dominant sporophyte generation. So let's look at the, the structure here for alternation of generations. Now you do have some of the diagrams in the, in the book that probably have a lot nicer pictures than what I have in my diagrams, but the difference in what you see in your book and what I'm putting on my board behind me is that I've kept the same basic structure um, of the diagram in every single one. So it's a little bit easier to see the differences between the different kinds of plants. So that's why I've done the, the diagrams on the board in this way, just so it's a little easier for you to see the differences. All right, so if we look at um, the, the ferns, um, again, spores are produced by our sporophyte generation, but this time the spores, instead of just being released, they're actually stored for a period of time in what are called sporangia, and the sporangia are in groups um, together, and each group of sporangia is called a sorus. And so if you look underneath on the bottom side of the fern leaf, you will see all these uh, little round uh, splotches, little round dots on there. And those are all the sori that contain all of the spores. So when the spores um, are released, and then remember this is, again, they're the halfway generation, so they're going to go through mitosis. The spores produce what's called a prothallus. Um, if you remember in the bryophytes, we actually had one type of little plant structure that was male and another type of little plant structure that was female. But in a fern, there's just one gametophyte and that's called a prothallus. And the prothallus holds both the antheridia and the archegonia as opposed to it being two separate structures. So just as before, um, your sperm is made in your antheridia, the egg is made in the archegonia, and then the sperm, again, um, is going to swim to the egg in water. Now, these plants are much taller and they do have um, vascular tissue, which is what I was mentioning a couple of videos ago when we said that um, that's the tubes that go within them so that they can transport water and dissolve minerals all throughout the plant. So ferns do have that, that vascular structure, but they also live in very moist environments because the sperm still needs uh, water to be able to swim to the egg and to get into the archegonia. Once again, um, fertilization takes place. Um, we have a zygote, but now the sporophyte generation is the one that's dominant and it does not grow on top of the gametophyte like it did before. Um, it, this is the fern that you are gonna see when you're walking through the woods or if, if your family has a plant uh, fern at home as a house plant. That is the sporophyte generation. And so this is just a, a, little, a little piece that kind of is, is added on to the rest of this, okay? So then once again, the sporophyte will go through meiosis and make the spores. So very similar um, type of diagram here that we saw with the bryophytes. Differences between the bryophytes and the pteridophytes are that the sporophyte generation is dominant and in place of having the antheridia and archegonia on separate structures, now they're on the same structure called a prothallus. So that will take care of our pteridophytes.